Howdy, God Almighty. This is the Sweat Equity Podcast. I am Law Smith, your host. Um, doing this from the uh, recording this from the Cigar City Studios in my Tokabaga Consulting office in a beautiful Ebor City, the historic part of Tampa, Florida. Uh, I'm running this solo. I'm going Bill Burr on this one because I, I, I uh, in the topic. You'll probably hit the topic on Laughable app. So check out at Laughable app. You can tag me. So if I show up on any other podcast, it'll let you know. It's kind of a new way. The iTunes app is meh. Either If you're on either of them, try to give us a five-star review. Uh, the cheat code for us to get up the rankings, just like any other uh, five-star review for a business online, is five-star review right you know, about two sentences or so, and um, that that cheat code gets us up the rankings and subscribe. I think those three parts, subscribe, five star, write a little something, that'll help us get up the rankings. The better the rankings, the better this does, the more uh, we might be able to get advertisers. There's some talk of that, huh? Uh, and then I can get someone maybe, maybe I could pay someone to book guests. Maybe I can get a PR company. I don't know. I, I want better guests. Um, I do want guests that are uh, local, or I can meet with them at some point. Ah, there's there's someone mad outside. I don't know if that honk came into the microphone or not, but I definitely heard it. So, my thing is I want to get better guests. There's always, for some random reason, there's always interesting people coming through Tampa. At least I can get comedians over here. That's not paid but that's just me feeling better about this podcast that I'm like hey we got we've got 10,000 listeners you know instead of we're hovering around a thousand 1500 which is great but share it with a friend tell someone uh, tell someone that wants to be an entrepreneur wants to do their own thing um, or just needs some kind of business advice some pragmatic advice that's kind of why I wanted to do this I tell people I give advice to them to give it to myself a lot of the time so you know, I wanted to kind of go over, and I only have a limited amount of time. I think this would be maybe a micro style, 10 minute, uh, one person podcast. But, um, you know, I wanted to stay consistent on Thursdays. That's something new. I was like, got to really do it. Got to do that. But you got to get a process. You got to get pretty much with everything in your life. So I've, I've learned that everybody kind of knows that. You know, um, you want to be the whimsical, creative, the uh, the thing that, you know, you just make magic happen by doing your work uh, and everything else will fall into place. But most people aren't like that. Almost everybody I know is not like that. And so, like, for instance, even just small things like keeping the office organized. It's one of those weird things that I always heard some quote about Einstein. If you didn't have a messy desk, you weren't really working. And you're like, yeah. I'm brilliant in my own way, like him. I don't have a mustache. I'll get, I'll do one one day, but you kind of uh, you kind of justify the way you want to, and then here's what happens: come tax season, when I'm trying to try to do the taxes, I spend about half the time just organizing papers, and I spend a lot of my my time in a rush. Uh, if I wasn't just an asshole and kind of just organize for 20 minutes a day I wouldn't if I'm in a rush I'll know exactly where shit is but for whatever reason it's so ingrained in me to not be that kind of organized that I have to work like beginning of the day write out hey take 20 minutes to not be an asshole (laughs) and and organize so 
it's one of those things where I, I wanted to talk about kind of being obsessed with the process. So every every business has a process. If you want to do something, you want to make an app, you want to start your own business, there's going to be multi, there's going to be multiple different processes within that thing. So if you ma- you want to make an app, there's going to be a process for uh, the customer experience. What's that like? What are the steps? How does that break down? What's the technology I need to round those steps? Um, in our industry, for um, for client based project or uh, on retainer basis, it's kind of we got to get obsessed with you know being better in an industry that doesn't really have a template for what we're doing. You know, it's it's customized small business consulting. Or we do a lot of marketing, and I'm trying to explain that you know don't think of us as because b- people will think of you whatever whatever the first thing they met you as I, i've been introduced as a website designer i've been introduced as a graphic designer which i'm clearly not um i can do a little bit but i wouldn't ever call myself someone that is a badass at graphic design um i can make concepts but i can't do shit after that um i can make social media design but nothing after those two things I can make, no, just kidding. Um, you know, I, I, so if I'm introduced to someone as an online advertiser, that's all they think of me as. And I get that. That's not a big deal. That's how we, that's how we all do things. We can only file so much information on everybody you meet. But I try to talk about, you know, uh, when we, we work with people, it's, it's not about marketing in the sense that it's not about just raising revenue or sales. It's about lowering costs and raising that profit margin or raising your overall margin. And so you got to get that being obsessed with processes and operations. And like if you're sitting around and everybody has this, you have to dedicate time to really focus on continuous improvement, that CI for your your business. Um, You know, our big thing, like having a, a template for a proposal, ours are customized so thus I justify it. Hey, this is really difficult. I'm going to need like a week to really figure this out. And that's not really how you project manage something like that. You just kind of, you can either do it every time we have a proposal. You can make it a little bit better each time. Uh, and then, or you can, you know, uh, take your calendar and go, all right, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday for 30 minutes, I got to look at this thing and see what I can do with it. And that's how you should really probably do it proactively. You know, I know I should probably go on Upwork and maybe find an Excel person or some kind of some kind of software engineer to do this. But there's costs associated with it. Not only time to find the right person, which is is, is a thing in itself, but uh, financially, um, there's an issue with that as well. It's like, should we be spending money over here? You know on this because this could get really expensive just like an app just like any software so if you're opening a restaurant or a bar there's processes for everything all right at the end of the night put the chairs up clean the dishes do all this stuff make sure that everything's locked but turn off all whatever every business has it but in in most businesses have a lot of fat in that area now that can be on the actual operation side like that or that can be like uh, we talk to a lot of people about content marketing and we're trying to figure out a new process to really streamline that. How do we procure that content from a client or from, let's say, a bar or restaurant? How can we get it from the employees to bottleneck to us? Then we kick it out to social, online advertising, email marketing, all that stuff. So there's that, there's that thing of like how do you – how do you become obsessed with the process? How do you artificially do that? I mean, it, it, it's not fun or easy. I, I found one way to do it. And it's really when you're doing some kind of thing, like I was talking about proposals, and they take us a while. And I I was kind of not a pity party, but not like not being like I should take I should run into the fire instead of away from it. But that thing of like, um, how do I explain this? When you're, 
when I'm spending hour number three or four on a proposal where I know this can be done in 20 minutes and honestly, accurately, a lot more accurately, if you trim down the amount of human error I can, I can put in there or my time to check, triple check, quadruple check, um, and automate a lot of this based on previous experience, you know, I find myself getting pissed at myself. And when I really started going, all right, do you want to, do you want to do this forever? Do you want to just do duplicative work? I'm, I'm having, just like I'm having a conversation in this podcast, I'm having one with myself, getting mad at myself and going, come on, let's fucking get it together. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's start really focusing on these issues and write them down on a list, check that list in the morning, middle of the day, end of, end of the day, and fucking knock some shit out. Play like a goddamn champion. So, and I and then I slap whatever door frame is around me. So something like that, where you just go, what do you want to do with your 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 life? On you know, we're only on this blue marble for so long, right? Do you want to spend your time doing the exact same shit over and over that could have been handled if you just instead of watching? Uh, I'm obsessed with billions. I binge watched it over the weekend while working. You know, that laptop open kind of work where I just got to do it. I don't have to put a lot of thought into some of this work. If I just maybe didn't knock out that work a little bit quicker by not having that on, maybe save billions. Maybe I didn't need to binge watch it. I don't know if it's cheesy. My my buddy, uh, Brendan T. Gleason, comedian, good buddy, said it's a kind of a corny show and that bummed me out. But I look, I like corny, so I, I'm going with it. Um, and he looks like Paul Giamatti and he'll never listen to this. He doesn't even know how to operate an uh, iPhone to find a podcast. And I hope someone hears this and then tells him about it. Anyway, um, I could have turned that off a little bit earlier, turned that off completely, got work done earlier and then gone, Hey, let's spend 20, 30 minutes on this and then knock it out and then be able to teach it to someone eventually. That's another thing I've been doing. And kind of consulting my clients is anything on your computer, you can take a, a a display, a video display, or any if you're not even good at computers, but someone's showing you how to do something, take a video grab, like a screenshot, but for videos, you can do it on on Mac with QuickTime. Um, I use an app called Any Screen Any Screen Record Pro. It it's choppy like that. Um, <laughs> Some Chinese guy probably made it and uh, like six, seven years ago, put it in the app store. Uh, and I don't think it's in the app store anymore. You got to Google it. Um, I use that one because it kicks out video at a lower megabyte. So you're not, you're not wasting a lot of time or wasting a lot of uh, gigs on just these videos. But anything that you do that's hard, I do some coding every now and again. I'm not the best coder. Um, it's not what I was brought up doing, but I can do it because it's basically just math. However, I can trim a lot of fat if I go, oh, this is how I did this with this project. Save this in a repository. Stop being an asshole. Take 10 minutes and do a video tutorial of what you just did. Then I can teach that to someone else. That's how we scale. And that, that's ultimately why a lot of small businesses don't grow or, uh, the project doesn't get off the ground. Th they don't get like Gruden, John Gruden, obsessed with offensive plays style, like crazy about their operations like they should. If if you, I use Gruden as an example, I think subconsciously, but now I think about it, his whole thing was about getting, to, you get to the line, you're going to do all these weird kind of motions and all this stuff, all these little intricacies, but everything matters into the setup of a, of a play, even though the playbook, the terminology is crazy. And that all matters. So it's one of those things where how do you do that? Well, just call yourself an asshole. <laughs> and that'll, that might help you. If you're sensitive, maybe you got to be like Richard Simmons to yourself. Go, come on, man, you can do this. It's jazzercise a little bit later. And then, hey, man, this won't be hard anymore. So that's kind of uh, where I'm at. I'll give out some uh, other pragmatic advice. 
because project management's a big one I, I run into with a lot of people, depending on, by the way, Squarespace, what the fuck? Why don't you advertise with us? What's going on? Make 40 sites for you a year, and we're on pace to make like 80 this year. What's going on? Throw me a promo code. I just want to have an advertiser like Squarespace. Um, they will definitely not advertise now. But project management is a, is really tough. Uh, I haven't found an app I've loved yet, but I'll just I'll throw some out there um, for for what we do. But I think there's other ones that are out there to help you out. Um, I like them all that integrate with Slack because we use that for our communication. Um, I would say the one I came closest to and we may still use is called, uh, I think it's Rink, Rink, uh, Rink, Rink, I don't know, W-R-I-K-E. Um, it's a little expensive, so that that's one. I don't have anything open. I'm doing this off memory, so fuck you if you're like, why is he mumbling? See, I'm in my own dome. All right, you have that one. You've got Basecamp. You've got Trello. Um, you've got... What's the one with Insta Gantt charts? Um, damn. You've got Asana. Uh, you've got Canva for uh, design. That's not really project manager, but it's shared. Uh, you've got, what was the other one? Wonderless is another one. We use a Zendu for tasks. So you have tasks are kind of sub to projects if this is boring sorry but i have a lot of people asking me like how do you tackle this this feels it feels overwhelming and then you just go you just don't want to do it <laughs> it's like trying to uh, redo parts of our house it's like i'll start thinking about it and go oh fuck it i'll do that i'll do it later i'll do it later but and then i'll never do it so check out those things so reek rink base camp trello asana um a Zendu, Wonderlust, To Do is another one. Um, anything that you can just, oh, this is how we did this process. Here are the steps. Then you can copy and paste it the next project you have. If you're a project based business, if you're more of an ongoing business, um, you're an office manager. Man, people are crazy. Driving angry. Like Nick Cage. Um, if you if you're an office manager or something like once a week you gotta clean the copier. You can set that alert in there, but it's not mixing with your personal life if you don't want it to. Just be a, a at the office thing. So one of those kind of things. I use this Zendu for a house because I like it. I forget. I've got a terrible memory. I know that. So I try to treat our house a little bit like a ongoing management. Some are, some are projects, some are ongoing. So, all right. Hope this wasn't meandering too much. I tried not to go too fast. I definitely got on Tangent Highway. I'd give this to C minus. Uh, Squarespace, hit me up. My email is law, L A W, at T O C O W O R K S dot com, law at tocoworks dot com. You can send anything, any kind of questions, even if it's my dickhead friends sending fake ones I'll probably still read them on there peace